welcome back to Global Value. In today's video, we will be performing a fundamental stock analysis of Global Payments Inc., ticker symbol GPN. This analysis is going to help us get a starting point on the company by taking a look at its underlying financials. So at the time of recording, Global Payments is trading for just over $136 a share. Their share price has been down nearly 40% over the past year. However, over the past 10 years, Global Payments has done quite well, beating the S&P 500 and returning a 19.5% compounded annual growth rate. So we can see that Global Payments is about $20 over its 52-week low, which is down quite a bit from its 52-week high of about $220 a share. Global Payments is a large company with nearly a $37 billion market cap. As for some background about the company, Global Payments is a leading provider of payment processing and software solutions that focuses on serving small and mid-sized merchants. It operates through three segments, merchant solutions, issuer solutions, and business and consumer solutions. The company operates in 30 countries and generates about one-fourth of its revenue from outside North America, primarily in Europe and Asia. In 2019, Global Payments merged with Total System Services in an all-stock deal that gave Total System Service shareholders 48% of the combined company's shares. Global Payments was founded in 1967 and is headquartered in Atlanta, Georgia. So the analysis we'll be performing of Global Payments is going to be an eight-pillar stock analysis popularized by Everything Money. So let's get right into our fundamental analysis. Starting off with pillar number one, we're looking for their average five-year PE to be below 22 and a half. Looking at their chart, we can see that their average PE is actually 66. So that's pretty far off from what we wanted. This is going to be an X to start. Next for pillar number two, we want their average five-year return on capital to be above 9%. So here we can see that global payments averages around this mid single digits return on capital. And in fact, over the past five years, they've averaged four and a half percent return on capital. So about half of that metric that we were looking for. This one's going to be another X. Moving on to their income statement. Pillar number three, we're looking for five year revenue growth. This one's going to be a check. In 2017, they had about four billion dollars in revenue, and that's more than doubled to eight and a half billion dollars as of the end of 2021. Pillar number four, we're looking for net income growth. In 2017, Global Payments had net income of $470 million, and they more than doubled that to $965 million of net income in 2021. So back-to-back -back checks on revenue and net income growth. Pillar number five, we want their share count to be decreasing. So in 2017, they had 155 million shares outstanding, and that nearly doubled to 293 million shares outstanding as of 2021. There was a significant jump right when they had that merger with Total System Services. So this one's going to be another X. Next for pillar number six, we're looking for five-year free cash flow growth. In 2017, they had about $300 million of free cash flow, and they grew this to about $2.2 billion of free cash flow in 2021. So that is going to be a check. Averaged out, they've generated about $1.3 billion of free cash flow each year over the past five years, and this number looks like it's steadily increasing. They've been able to 5x their cash from operations while only doubling their capital expenditures, so that's a great sign to see there. One thing to make note of is that it looks like a lot of this free cash flow is going directly to cash acquisitions. So between issuing new shares and using this cash for acquisitions, Global Payments is heavily reliant on acquisitions to accelerate its growth. As investors, we want to understand the value that has either been created or destroyed from these past acquisitions. Is management doing a good job of capital allocation? Pillar number seven, we want their net debt to be below their five-year average free cash flow multiplied by five. So at the end of 2021, they had nearly $11 billion of net debt. Net debt is the amount of debt that they have after subtracting cash and cash equivalents from their balance sheet. They average about $1.3 billion a year in free cash flow. Multiplying that number by five brings us to $6.5 billion. So just over half of this net debt amount. That's going to be another X. Global payments has higher amounts of debt than we're comfortable with. Finally, the big pillar of them all, pillar number eight, we want their market cap to be below their five-year average free cash flow multiplied by 20. So currently they have a market cap of about $37 billion and multiplying $1.3 billion of average free cash flow times 20 brings us to about $26 billion. 
So that free cash flow is roughly two thirds of their market cap. So we are off there and that one is gonna be another X. So in summary, Global Payments checks the box on three out of eight pillars. They've been able to grow revenues, net income and free cash flow. However, they have a very high PE, they have less than average returns on capital, diluted shareholders by more than 50%, they use a lot of debt, and their market cap is well above what their free cash flow profile looks like. If you're interested in learning more about the company, I highly recommend taking a look at their filings, read through their annual report, dive into a 10K, and take a look at some of their quarterly earnings statements to see how, how reliable some of this growth is going to be in the future. That's it for today's stock analysis of Global Payments, Inc., ticker symbol GPN. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and comment down below what company you want me to take a look at next. Have a great day and thanks for watching to the end.